Day 515. Today there is a lot of news from the South. First of all, more information became available about yesterday's strike on the Crimean airfield. Recently released satellite footage shows two burning hangars. Even though the airfield was not used by aviation, it still served as a military base. And because it is located just 2.5 kilometers from the nearest train station, Russians accumulated there a lot of ammunition, set in perfect conditions for the strike. This is already the second ammunition depot that the Russians lost in Crimea, and it looks like it is not going to be the last one. Russian forces responded to these developments by launching yet another strike on Odessa. Ukrainian general staff reported that Russians launched in total 19 cruise missiles of various types, including Onyx, Iskander, Caliber and H-22. Almost all Caliber and Iskander missiles were shut down, while all Onyx and H-22 missiles reached their targets. Four missiles hit harbors, while six missiles hit residential areas. In the aftermath of the strike, at least six residential buildings were hit or damaged, and also two architectural monuments and the Transfiguration Cathedral, which resulted in dozens of casualties among civilians, including children. The Russian Ministry of Defense reported that destroyed military bases where Ukrainians were preparing terrorist attacks against the Russian Federation. The Transfiguration Cathedral is the biggest cathedral in Odessa and obviously a sacred temple for everyone. Unfortunately, it sustained tremendous damage. Early in the morning, the locals showed up at the cathedral and started cleaning everything up, both inside and outside. Everyone worked very organized and quickly, rapidly eliminating the aftermath of the strike. In the meantime, Ukrainian forces in the Kherson region expanded their bridgehead on the eastern bank of the Dnipro River significantly. After weeks of futile counterattacks, Russian forces accumulated insurmountable losses and had to stop their offensive efforts. Ukrainian fighters claimed that they eliminated a lot of commanders of the forces engaged in these operations. Some less prominent Russian sources published a short audio interview with a Russian soldier, where the soldier confirmed that his platoon, company and battalion commanders died in strikes on command posts. The situation was so bad that all Russian analysts positively responded to the news about the retreat. The analysts concluded that this was a sound decision, as the Ukrainian bridgehead was too far from the main Russian base, and Russians did not have many options for how to attack it, which is why all their attacks were predictable and ended up disastrously. Nonetheless, they also noted that such developments facilitate further development of the bridgehead and that Ukrainians will definitely try to get close to Oleshke, establish fire control over the outer edge and drive Russian forces from the outskirts and then possibly take Oleshke. So far, it seems like everything has gone according to such a plan as Russians started bombing not only the area immediately around the bridge, but also houses several kilometers west. In fact, it's been confirmed that Ukrainian forces have already crossed the small river and established control over the houses on the next island. Russian sources claim that Ukrainians prepared an ambush and destroyed the Russian unit that was protecting this area. Recently released footage shows how Ukrainian drone operators are hunting down Russian patrols around Oleshki. The patrol was liquidated precisely in the area of the most recent Ukrainian advances, which indicates that Ukrainians are planning to establish a bridgehead on the same side of the river as Oleshki, which is already the mainland. Today Ukrainians also conducted a huge strike on the House of Occupation authorities in Oleshki. The building was completely wiped out, which serves as a good signal about the intentions. This is not the first strike on Oleshki. Ukrainians destroyed multiple command posts on the outskirts of the town. Russian sources reported that the intensity of these strikes is increasing every day, and at some point the situation with communication will become critical. Combining these developments with the strikes on Russian supply lines in Crimea, Russian forces may need to retreat further than just Oleshki. If you are against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I am doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the line store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.